Welcome to Strength in the Numbers. My name is Andrew Codd, accountant, author, and commercial finance entrepreneur. And it's my job each week to bring you leaders in finance and business and deconstruct with them their real stories, insights, and hard-won lessons into practical advice on the key strengths and qualities you need to remain relevant in accounting and finance today, as well as the steps you can begin to take to elevate the impact you make to have a fun, successful, and rewarding career in accounting and finance. Now let's go over to the show. We need to make this easy for them, not only because they don't have the time and, and they are looking in one day at a time how to survive and how to generate and bring the money to the table, but at the same time, right, we need to make sure these guys will rip the benefits of being you know, a sustainable company in terms of reputation, in terms of good communication strategies that comes from being socially responsible or environmentally friendly, but also you have the information to support that. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's Strength in the Numbers. Now, you've just heard from this week's guest mentor, Colin Banning. And Colin, who, although he started in finance, has gained experience in business development, outsourcing, transition transformation across a number of blue chips, Coca-Cola Enterprises, Capgemini, Xerox. And is currently working with the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development which is really where we kick our conversation off. You know, we go through his work with the United Nations, particularly around how we can facilitate better adoption of corporate reporting and culture, specifically with regards to ESG, so environmental, societal and governmental objectives, as well as these SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, you might have heard of. Uh, we then focus in predominantly what we find in a lot of our economies are the SMEs, who might actually think having a focus on sustainability might be expensive or, or difficult and how to help them along that journey, which we can also bring into our enterprise and corporate finance worlds too. And we then spend a lot of time discussing the importance of cross-functional collaboration, how we can go beyond the spreadsheet and what that means for the triple bottom line, also the title of this podcast. So look, hope you really enjoy this episode. If you do, you can find out more about Colin in the show notes as well as key resources he mentioned, key quotes, and also an archive of all the other podcasts we've done to date. And of course, we always appreciate when you recommend the show to your friends and colleagues. We're on all the major platforms. You can subscribe on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, and we're also on Amazon Music now. So look, that's enough for me. So without further ado, over to Colin and the show. Colin, welcome to the show. Andrew, nice being here. Thank you for having me. It's it's our pleasure. And what's even better is a, a previous guest mentor on the show recommended I go interview you. And so that means maybe some of our audience might not be necessarily as familiar with your background. So before we get into the main interview, would you mind maybe sharing a bit about your journey and your career with our audience, please? Sure, absolutely. I'm currently a national consultant in Guatemala for the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. The, the acronym is UNCTAD, right? But I'm a CEO for my own consulting firm. It's DGV Consulting here in Guatemala. We're a regional firm for business development service from corporate law, labor strategy, sustainability reporting. We try to be a one-stop shop for, for this matter, right? When it comes to finance and accounting, I started maybe 12 years ago with Coca-Cola Enterprises. I was in charge of the corporate collections and deduction management team. A lot of surveys, Oxley audits as well. I was an auditor for the team here in Guatemala. But right now, my role in the UM is, is really primarily assessing what's the country's corporate reporting capabilities, what's the legislation, the capacity development opportunities, as well as how to incorporate this environmental, social, and governance information, the ESG information, sustainability, and SDG information into this reporting culture, right? So the UN has come up with a lot of tools. And my work is really to help them out, uh, figuring out how to use those tools and how to incorporate the reporting and helping obviously facilitate the adoption for key stakeholders, right? So uh, I've been in finance and accounting fairly for the last 12 years now, and it's been an amazing journey. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Colin. Uh, I think that resonated with a lot of our audience. It's a, we're very lucky to work in such a great part of organizations and also I think we can do a lot there for society so the fact of your work with the UN 
trying to understand, adapt and improve the corporate reporting culture and capabilities seems really exciting. So in terms of that work you're doing with the UN on that, where do you start facilitating the better adoption of corporate reporting and culture? Mm-hmm. Well, I think we, we first need to understand where we're standing, right? And in, in some terms, sustainability in a country like Guatemala, that's the majority of the companies here are family owned businesses, number one, and most of them are SMEs. Mm-hmm. They're really living one day at a time, looking to be profitable, but are not necessarily looking for the impact their operation have on the environment and their communities, right? So when I got involved with the UN, this is really what resonated with me is the fact that our consulting experience and the previous work experience I had in Coca-Cola, I also worked for Xerox corporations for about eight years on reporting as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it really helped them out figuring out what are the best practices that SME needs to take into their business model, how to revamp their cost structure, how to revamp their business model, how to revamp their go-to-market strategy in terms of, yes, I need to be profitable, but at the same time, I cannot be profitable at the expense of the environment that provides me a lot of the raw material I use in my business or with the communities and the society that will be either my providers, my vendors, my clients, right? Mm -hmm. So we came up with the guide and core indicators, which is a tool developed by the United Nations that will help those business owners understand from a financial perspective, taking P&Ls, headcount reportings, environmental impact studies, how to really measure your company's performance around those other areas that are less sexy for a better lack of <laughs> yes. or evaluating the business opportunities, right? So yeah, see, that's interesting because you use the word opportunities there, Colin. I think when people think of this reporting and even extra reporting obligation yes. or whatever, they just think cost. You know, that's more work, that's more to do. But I suppose what gets lost in this is the importance of the sustainable development agenda the fact that we need to be aware of our environment societal objectives governmental objectives so this esg piece as well i get a sense there's a movement that a lot of corporates global corporates are getting it but when you mentioned smes and that's the start point how how do you get people who are living day to day and businesses moving day to day hand to mouth as we say how, how do you get them to engage in the process Well, it's really a whole change management process. Uh, And I'll give you an example. My own business partner, he he owns a restaurant chain here, and he has maybe 14 different restaurants. And he's still considered an SME, right? And he goes, you know what? Being sustainable is really nice, but it's too expensive. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So if I need to get a profit margin, then most likely if I use sustainable materials, I'm not going to hit those targets and I'm still a company that's less than five year old, right? So I'm, I'm on that point of I pass break even, but I really need to thrive and stabilize. I, 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 and we did that the exercise with him and I was like, well, you already had a PL, you already had a ledger and you already have to do a workforce reporting because it's a regulation you have to do it anyway. So let's start with that, right? What are you doing around employee training? What are you doing around occupational health and safety? Uh, Okay, let's figure that out. And we did the exercise with him and it was really interesting because obviously he was not doing a, a full high quality reporting, but he was halfway gone without knowing it, right? So about the fatigue about, oh, this is another framework, this is another report, and there is a lot of reporting fatigue around this. We need to make this easy for them, not only because they don't have the time and, and they are looking in one day at a time how to survive and how to generate and bring the money to the table, but at the same time, right, we need to make sure these guys will rip the benefits of being you know a sustainable company in terms of reputation, 
in terms of good communication strategies that comes from being socially responsible or environmentally friendly, but also you have the information to support that. So uh, once you start socializing and creating the awareness to the small and medium sized company, right? Yes, you have to bring the money to the table, but there's other options and there are other benefits about being sustainable, right? So mm -hmm. your capital will go up, you will have more clients, you can have more assets for your marketing strategy, and you are, have to appeal to a younger and maybe more responsible audience, right? That is willing and is already looking for these type of businesses. It's, it's good business because you're doing the right thing on top of that, you're integrating this into the business model because then we already use this information or we use information you're already producing. So we don't have to hit you with extra work on the corporate reporting side, but we're gonna take all the information from actual stuff you're already doing, right? And we'll produce these different set of reports with the same information that will open your eyes in terms of what's your waste management strategy. You're a food company, right? Uh, are you using uh, or are you recycling water? And what are the savings on the water recycling process, right? That you bring into the company that will net the extra cost, for example, on sustainable packaging. Right. And, start doing that in deep assessment right this is uh, what, what you're describing there colin is, is this would be fantastic for accountants and finance professionals to get into and if they were given a mandate to report on this as well even better i'm yeah. just coming back to the case you mentioned the story you mentioned where your business partner said oh but sustainability is expensive why is there that? You know, I just see opportunity here. I see you saving on uh, the waste of one process could be the input for another process type of thing. And mm -hmm. therefore, net, it's actually better for the P&L and the sustainability of the business and the environment and so on. But why do so many people just immediately jump, think, oh, my God, this is expensive. Therefore, we should be doing other things. Why, why do people think? I think it's a lack of understanding. I think it's really the lack of understanding on how can they improve their own processes with best practices. You just hit it uh, a little while ago, right, Andrew, when you said, well, th the waste in this process is an input for another one, and you obviously will start a cycle, right? It may be cycle, better yeah. Yeah. economy or recycling, but I think it's, it's the lack of understanding from the business owner, right, based on the fact that they know, well, sustainable packaging is way too expensive and I don't want to hit this extra cost. But I think then it's, it's the accounting and the finance professional work to help them figure out, okay, this is the information and, and these are the opportunities, right? Yeah. So, and he's going to be able not only to build awareness on the topic, right? And why it is important for us to do this in the long term but also he will get the basic understanding from the data and take informed decisions based on that. Because I think the really first impression is this is too expensive. This is too difficult. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah, I think it's... We don't know it. how to do it. That's it. I think yeah. that expensive is just substitute for this is too difficult. Oh, and I don't know. And I've got a thousand and one other things to go focus on to survive. Um, and you're talking yeah. to me about sustainability, which is not even on my agenda, particularly if I'm growing a business. But it, it just, I have to say, it does reflect poorly on accountants traditionally and finance professionals if business owners are thinking these things are expensive because it means there's blind spots in the data because there's, there's two ways of looking at things. One, you can solve problems with the information you have or you can mm -hmm. go and exploit opportunities. They're completely yes. different mindsets. I think one is probably more the cost waste management mindset that represents traditional finance and accounting. And the other one is probably more where the future's going, which is exploiting opportunities using non-financial sources of information and modeling those and understanding the financial implications downstream. And this comes as end-to-end -end view. So so I just see I just see loads of growth opportunities of finance to really get behind 
this ESG agenda and sustainable development of business, which is good for the business and also society. Let's not forget one of the obligations of accountants is to ensure business is a going concern. And that comes with sustainability, right? And and I think I loved your expression. We were having a chat off air, Colin. And I think you said it's really about us going beyond the spreadsheet. So a lovely expression. What sort of things could we be doing to exploit those opportunities to go beyond the spreadsheet? I, I think it's a responsibility for us to understand what are the basic processes that our organization carries on, right? So going beyond the spreadsheet in the sense that what's the ultimate impact on my organization, right? In my community, on the environment financially, right? Because I, w- I was mentioning the domino effect that this may have on this triple bottom line, right? So as the company scales, because we do have a winner strategy and we're being financially profitable, we have the best cost structure, we're budgeting everything and we're doing really good, right? And shareholders are happy. Then the company starts to scale, right? Mm, and yeah. Remember a, a quote from one of my professors at MIT, right? That he says, well, yes, your company may be scaling, but as the company scales and the animal goes out of control, <laughs> uh, are you going to manage that beyond the spreadsheet, right? And what will be the environmental impact you're creating? Does that going to create a reputational risk for your company because you're not being environmentally responsible? as you scale, right? Or on the other side, are you damaging the community? Does your supply chain is violating enterprise human rights based on your how you're getting your raw materials from? All that stuff that you have to start going beyond the spreadsheet. So you said it very well, Andrew. It's really our job to make sure that information comes and flows and we produce something that our senior leadership may take informed decisions with but at the same time understand all the bits and pieces that tell the story behind that the spreadsheet and and, and figure out the opportunity and and that's and like if, if i'm going to say it again because like we can't say it enough being, being in finance and accounting we've got this these great assets. We've got great visibility across those end-to-end pieces of the, the process of the business. We've access to data, access to decision makers. We've got the training to translate all that into the financial impacts as well. And But I think the key to unlocking that all, though, Colin, again, I think you said this as well to me, which was it's really understanding that ultimate use of the information, understanding what opportunity or what outcome can we drive from this why is it important to the stakeholders? Why would they want to listen to it? And then exactly. addressing it in their language and stuff that they can make actionable. I think someone said to me, I think it was another guest mentor, Jesper, said that information is just essentially data, but insight is actually actionable information. You can actually do something with the information. You can take an exactly. action. And it's really about getting beyond the spreadsheet to those insights that deliver beneficial outcomes to the business. And yes, if they touch on sustainability, Awesome. And, and yeah. to build on that, I, I believe it goes beyond that strategic insight to what you just said about the ability to make the informed decisions based on this factual data, right? So mm-hmm. as I'm a consultant, I, I was able to see things from an outsider perspective. Mm-hmm. Strategic insights may help the clients overcome that those, those challenges about how to improve their cost structure, how to improve their budgets, their KPIs, and, and, and obviously the change management process around bringing everyone together in the organization to the same page and act on those insights. And, and that's that ultimate use of the information you said, right? What are you going to do about it? How are you going to act? So that way, when next year, when we re- repeat the exercise, we will see before yeah. and after your report. Yeah, I know, I, yeah that, that's a great way of summarizing it there, Colin. And I suppose before we switch it up a few gears, I do want to get your thoughts on Given that outside in perspective that you're building, you're gaining and you've acquired over the years, are there any other areas you feel that we could be doing better in accounting and finance to improve upon the value or or the support we can have around these better reporting cultures and capabilities? It's becoming a trend right now. 
and I'm pretty sure a lot of the audience here may experience this every day, but is the fact that the, 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 the cross-functional teams are now becoming mm. some mm. right on the pandemic, right? Because mm. a, a lot of were going to work from home and these online tools brought us together, uh, but we kept this culture on putting together these cross-functional teams that will bring different perspectives to the table. And, and, and this resonates with an exercise we did with Xerox maybe ooh, six years ago. And we were doing the strategic planning for a year. And it was really the first time in maybe 25 years that Xerox made this exercise. And they brought together everyone, all the leadership positions in the company to a hotel in Dallas, Texas for a week. And we have the sales directors, VPs of sales, VPs of operations, directors of operations, account managers, and all the support services teams as well, right? And I remember we had an exercise when we have to, it was a great networking exercise, but pretty much matches in teams, right? One guy needs to be a guy from finance. Another guy needs to be a guy from sales. Another guy needs to be a guy from operations and another guy needs to be a guy from the sugar services team, right? And we came about this role-playing exercise when everyone was resolving that exercise at the best of their abilities from their own perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And it really helps us understand what are the other points of view and to my point on what are you going to do with the information you're producing, right? So I think it's really important for the finance and accounting professional to proactively look for those exposure opportunities, right? Trying to go ahead and sit down next to the sales guy and ask them, does the information that we produce helps you, right? How can we improve it? Why do you need this information for? Same thing with the ops guy, same thing with the logistics guy, for example, on supply chain. So it will give us a broader understanding on the impact on the work that we're doing. And we'll loop you into a continuous improvement virtual cycle, if you want to call it that way, right? So I think going beyond the spreadsheet also applies in this side of the house. And, and the audience listening to the podcast may relate to this because the value of the cross-functional team on this type of exercise is going beyond the spreadsheet. Is, is, is what really adds the value to the work that you're bringing to the table. Yeah, I think that's a great way of looking at it, Colin. It's those exposure opportunities and answering the questions. In the old days, we used to say coming out from behind our desks, but in these more virtual environments now, it's probably sitting at our desks and looking for those exposure opportunities with other parts of Absolutely. our organization. <laughs> Yeah, no, and especially if you have business models that are based on portfolio management. Yes, yeah, portfolio management. Yes. Functional teams. And our controller was our key player. Every time we were negotiating a deal with the commercial team, and then I was an ops guy, right? So we want to make sure that the, 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 the guy from the sales team was not over-promising, and then we were not <laughs> able to properly because the deal was profitable. <laughs> and then this is how you blend the controller and the accountant guy role into the operation and the cost on the day-to-day -day while the other guy is promising the heaven to the client, right? So we need to make sure that everyone works together. Yeah, exa exactly. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, and I think that becomes much easier if you've done the groundwork as well, taking the time to understand where other people are coming from so yes. you've got that bit of relationship, bit of rapport and familiarity. And I think we're not going to be able to jump on a plane for a lot of us anytime soon. So now it's just time to get used to having those virtual chats, coffees, whatever you want to call it. Get to understand mm -hmm. ahead of those key events, which will come up. So that's uh, some, some great advice there, Colin. So thanks. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. I am curious, though, what's been the best bit of, bit of advice you've ever received? Oh, man. Well, I'll tell you something. I, I will never forget a mentor of mine. And that's probably 12 years ago when I just started on this journey. And, and he said, the, the only time 
that we stop learning is when we're six feet under. <laughs> we're really a firm believer that, you know, their professional development leads to professional development. I'm sorry, personal development, professional development. And, and if you take the time to work on yourself and read at least 15 minutes a day about the topics that can relate to what you're doing, or at least every quarter, just unplug yourself and, and, and go reflect on how was your last quarter and what can we do better on the next quarter and, and, and then just socialize that with your with your teammates, right? I think is 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 really something that creates a good culture and creates a good working by and helps us challenge each other each other to constantly improve, right? So yep. I think these continuous learning opportunities and, and use those 15 minutes a day to read something that will build you up, that will add some more skills. And we started doing that in Xerox and it helps us tremendously. So not only yeah. because we have a lot of stuff to talk and discuss and refine the ideas, right? Because this same mentor just told me when he mentioned that we, we stop learning when we're six feet under is that the only way to refine an idea is through a debate. So you don't have to agree with me, but at least you have the information and you bring your own perspective to it. So I, I think that's the best piece of advice. Stay hunger for learning and for long knowledge. What a great bit of advice to have. <laughs> it's I, I just hope it came at a time where you understood it straight away because I know I've been given great advice over the years, but I suppose it, it, it resonates with people at different parts of their journey, but that one certainly, I know, will resonate with some of our audience, Colin. And, um, and then I suppose in terms of resources, so to embark further along that journey of learning, is are there any sort of resources that you might recommend our audience go check out? Well, in, it really depends on where and what are you interested in. I'll give you an example. If you're really looking, because we were talking about sustainable development and, and how to incorporate this into the business model at the beginning of the podcast, the UN has this SDG Wikipedia, right? And it will give you an operational definition on the objective, because there are 17 objectives around employment generation, gender equality, waste management, water usage, and so on, right? So it will give you the operational definition on each of one of them because then you have a clear understanding on your business operations will impact these many SDGs. And then it will give you information on what's the indicator that you can use to measure the success for this particular SDG. So the UN has a lot of resources. You can download the guides, you can download the books, and, but also libraries, right? Mm. And there are libraries. Uh, I personally like to stay, as you say, hunger for knowledge. Just look up for those books, man. You, I, I will not give you any other research <laughs> because I think a, a good man's library will talk a lot about himself. <laughs> Maybe just go look for the information, but I think you can find a lot of stuff online with the UN and, yeah. and their global reporting initiative, the GRI. They have a lot of other good information. They have the manuals, the handbooks, implementation guides, the World Business Council on Sustainable Development. These guys will provide practical implementation guides for CEOs and upper management. So you want to look into those as well. Because it's really help you understand from a business perspective how to tackle this from a practical implementation standpoint. So I love those guys there. That will be a good resource as well. That's actually it. Yeah, I'm glad you called us. We'll take out the links for those and put them into the show notes because I know I've looked into them myself. Like these things wouldn't have existed a few years ago. So there are very practical guides out there to help with implementation, particularly towards the SDGs as well. Uh, these sustainable yes. development goals so i encourage our audience to go check those out or if you give us a few moments we'll put them into the show notes you just click on the link it'll take you straight there so so colin thank you for those recommendations and should our audience wish to continue the conversation where's the best place to connect with you at oh, well yeah you guys can drop me a line i have my two emails right cbanning at tgvconsulting.net or you can send me an email straight to my UN email, colin.ben at un.org. Awesome. And we'll throw those into the show notes as well. And Colin, as we always do on the show, just want to sort of thank you for investing your time with us. 
and sharing such great insights. We covered so many different things there. I love the this idea of the triple bottom line going beyond the spreadsheets. And also there's external perspectives, outside in perspectives you're able to share with us. But before we, we wrap up, would you have any other parting thoughts you'd like to share with our audience? Well, um, first of all, I want to thank you guys for having me. It's been a great opportunity for us to share this experience with you and, and with the audience. So I think it's all something about that, right? To stay hunger, try to look up for these collaboration opportunities and try to build that report with your teams for them to understand what's their own impact on the operation and the environment and the society as well. So I think there will be no business opportunities in the next 15, 20 years if we don't dramatically change the way that we do business today. So uh, that will be my closing statement. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Hey, thank you, Colin, for coming on the show, being a great guest mentor. I appreciate it too. Thank you for having me. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to know more about our guests today, their bio, and follow up on the resources mentioned during the show, you can find all the relevant links and more at sitnshow.com. There you'll also be able to get access to earlier shows, read the latest blogs. There's also an opportunity to subscribe to our newsletter, which will give you heads up as to when the next show is coming out, latest events, news, and anything that's going to be relevant to help you have a fun, rewarding, and successful career in finance and accounting. And just before you go, we really appreciate your feedback. If there's something we can do better on the show, something that's not working, or something you'd like to see, even a guest you'd like for us to invite onto the show, someone who you think might be able to benefit you more and also the rest of our community, please let me know. You can email me. I'm at andrew at sitnshow.com or feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just drop me a message so I know how you found me and we can connect. And really, it's our community that will make the show. If we keep engaging and driving each other on, we'll keep on building our strength in the numbers. And when all is said and done, if we can do the numbers better and finance better, we'll create more opportunities for ourselves, our friends, our families, our communities and our businesses. So until next time, have a good rest of the week. Take care and let's keep building our strength in the numbers.